Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Positive Principle Show. And I'm so honored. Not only do I have Max with me this morning, but I have um, a guest that I have been really wanting to learn more about her, like her wisdom, like her earth, earthly wisdom. Um, but I have a feeling it's more than just earthly wisdom. I'm so excited <laughs> to interview Dr. Linda Howe. <laughs> Linda, how are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. And I'm really happy to be with you two today. And with everybody, actually. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So it's Linda is yeah. like the specialist of, I mean, I think she's the go-to person on Akashic Records. And Akashic Records right now, I believe are kind of like that sexy thing. Like if you're a medium or you can read the Akashic records, because if you can, you know everything. Like, you know why you meet somebody, you know why you walk down the street, you know all of that stuff, potentially. I'm not sure. We're going to find out more about Linda. <laughs> um, but she does have, uh, she is an author and I have one of her books with me right now. She's a teacher. I'm not sure that she still does live readings or not, but she has uh, a lot of students that do so. So um, here we are with Dr. Linda Hall and Max Ryan. Well, it's great to be here and have Linda with us because, um, you know, I've definitely over the years, your name has popped up and I've read stuff about you. And I just really think that um, I have, a, I personally have a lot of questions about Akashic Records and where different, um, different uh, theories come in about um, about knowledge and all that stuff. And I really want to hear what you have to say about some of that stuff. And I think that the, the audience really um, would like to know that because I think that on our spiritual journey where it's, I think it's a journey. I mean, I think, I know that my spiritual journey is about, about knowledge, about finding truth, about finding pathways. And I think you are really one of those people that um, that we can turn to for that. So I'm excited. Absolutely. So Max, should you and I alternate questions? Because I know both of us have so many, so many questions that we want to well, understand or get. Sure. Let's let's all we'll alternate, and maybe we can start off with Linda telling us a little bit about her story and about how she came to the Akashic Records. <laughs> all right. In all right, let's go back to the beginning. And the beginning is always a good place. So, so, you know, my work in the Akashic Records was not anything I ever planned for. Do you know, I grew up in a very traditional Midwest religion in Chicago. I'm second of eight, large family like that. Very ordinary life, <clears throat> okay? And I was raised to believe that if I managed well, that I would get to be happy. Now, you know, I love a challenge. I rolled up my sleeves. I did everything I thought was right. And I did, I, I did fine. And I woke up at the age of 24 and I had everything I thought I wanted. I had a fabulous apartment. I had great friends. I, it was just, it really, I had a terrific job that I really hated. I mean, I was, a, you know, I was 24, I was, you know, Life in the big city and a lot of nice shoes. Anyway, but what I didn't have was any sense of fulfillment. Okay. I had, it was, and I woke up and I was just astonished that, that the picture of my life could look so good and my insides could feel so empty. I just, it, this made no sense to me. So <clears throat> I said a prayer to a God I didn't believe in, right? And I was just like, you, if you are even there, big guy, you have got to help me. Well, within short order, a couple of weeks, I had a moment of spiritual awareness, as many people on the planet at this time are having. And in this moment, I was overcome with, um, with a sense of being completely known, completely loved, as I am, right? And, and an important part, a valuable part of the whole of creation. I want you to know how long did it last? I don't know, 30 seconds. I was in shock because I had never, see, I was raised on this idea that I had to earn everything, right? And, and this just came to me. Nothing had prepared me for that moment of, 
of the um, unconditional love, yeah? And I thought, I have no idea what this is, but whatever it is, I have got to have it in my life, right? It, it just, it was, it was a decisive moment. I was 24 years old <laughs> and I lost out on my path. I happen to be a very enthusiastic person. So what happens is I spend the next 16 years, I took every class, I went to every religion, I looked under every rock, I did everything known to man and alien to help myself. What I wanted to do was recreate this. I thought I have got to be able to get to that place and not by accident because I kept trying to regenerate it for myself. I was like, hmm, let's see, I slept till noon. Uh, you know, I needed to wash my hair. You know, I, I'm trying to recreate the conditions that gave rise to this moment of awareness. I couldn't do it, right? And when I was 40, um, I, I heard this, uh, I heard about this class Akashic Records. Now, I didn't even know what the word meant, right? It just went through me like, Neh. I thought, well, whatever this is, I'm in. I have to go check it out. So I did. And I went to this class and it was fascinating to me because it wasn't like at the personality level, these weren't my people. Do you understand? Like they were very esoteric, a little weird. They were not warm or friendly. They were nice. Don't get me wrong. I just wasn't going to have lunch with any of them. Okay. I get it. They weren't a match. This was not a match. And then the woman, the teacher taught us how to open our records. So I followed the instructions and I had a moment that was the closest, was it exactly the same? I'll give it a 99 percenter on that experience I had when I was 24. And I thought, that's it. And my thought at the time was, I have no idea what this is. I don't even know what these people are talking about, but I'm gonna follow it until it kind of like dries up. Cause I had had that experience, right? I had had that experience with tarot cards and different kinds of, um, uh, you know, different practices along the way. And I thought, well, this has a, this has an expiration date. I'll see what it is. That was um, almost, what was it? That was, let's say, that was 1994. And so I, that's a long time ago, right? I never expected it to keep going. Because what, so, so I'll tell you what. So I followed the instructions. I worked in this way and, um, And, and it has been certainly life-changing for me, right? And for, for many other people around the world. Um, it is not what I expected. You know, when I first came in, it was so funny. I'm in my records and I'm like, um, well, what is this, right? You know, what am I doing? What is this? And what I get is, this is an infinite spiritual resource. I thought, oh yeah, I get that. I had no idea. The, my, you know, I'm, I'm mortified by my own arrogance because, because I didn't know what infinite meant. And what I've come to understand in my experience is like, I will do, I'll be working in my records. I learn stuff. I love it. It's so, it's so enriching. It's so wonderful. And I get to a certain point and I think, well, I'm coming to the end of the road. And then it's almost like there's a tilt and there's a whole new vista ahead of me. Right. And it's it's what I, I you know, there's no way um, th this was not in my my conscious mind. Right. That I would do this. Um, you know, where I'm from, people don't even say the word Akasha. <laughs> because it's like it's like, oh, my God, what is that? What is that? You know, anyway. <clears throat> so it turns out Akasha is a Sanskrit word. And what it means is primary substance that from which all things are formed. So what we're dealing with is the real raw essence of life, okay? <clears throat> and the Akashic record is a vibrational archive of every soul and its journey as human. Now that's a loaded, I don't, you know, that's loaded to me because 
because you know it, it it defies it well it really it's a, it's a very apt description but it defies so many of my old ideas which i've had to let go of one at a time some i've had to let go of some have been ripped out of my hands but that's another story but the thing about it is is that as a vibrational archive it's vibrational so it's invisible we never see it so when people say i saw the golden book I'm like, how come you get to see the golden book? I've never seen a golden book, <laughs> okay? I don't know, it's, it's vibrational. We cannot see it with, with the human eye or even with the strong eye. There is nothing to see. Okay, let's start there. Archive, what's an archive? An archive is a collection, okay? So it's the collection, a vibrational archive of every soul. So it's a collection of all souls as human, yeah? Um, which means everybody's in it. That's what makes up the record. It's, it's every, everyone. So even pe people we like, people we don't like, people we're afraid of, people we think are jerks, people that we love and adore, everybody's in. And everyone, everyone has a rightful place in the record. So if somebody says, like people have said, they call me, they're like, oh, somebody said I've been erased from the records. That is an energetic impossibility. No one, that's impossible. You know, and, and we have to, because it's a new area of, of awareness for, for secular people like us, we have a lot to learn, we have a lot to unlearn, right? And it's, so it's a vibrational archive of every soul and its journey is human. So what that means is we're only talking only like it's not enough, right? It's enough, trust me, um, about our lifetimes as human. Now, there are people who say, I want to know what other planet I'm from. Well, I don't know about that. The record doesn't address that. It doesn't say you were on another planet or you weren't. It just is like, that's not the region, right? And then there are other people who say, my reader told me I was a bunny in my past life. <laughs> I'm like, well, worse things have happened. <laughs> you know, come on, that's good. But, but the fact of the matter is the record does not address if we, I mean, have we been animals? Will we become animals? I don't know. What I do know is the record doesn't address it. So we want to be clear about what it is and what it isn't. Okay. See, prior to like the like it was the late 80s, early 90s, prior to that time, the record had been the exclusive realm of like mystics and scholars and sainted ones. Certainly, certainly not people who drop the F-bomb or, you know, eat Cheetos, right? And, and there was a huge, there was a dramatic shift in the record in that it became available for the first time in human history. The record became open to secular people like us. This is very, very exciting. However, what was missing um, was appropriate training. It would be like we all got, we all got new cars, but none of us know how to drive them, right? So we have to learn how to drive. Once we learn how, we know how, and we can pass it on. I don't know about you guys, but I know my parents certainly my parents certainly had never heard of the Akashic Record, and they certainly had no way of knowing how to engage in this dimension with any productive, positive results. And, and yet my son, my son says things to me like, why do you make such a big deal out of that? Everybody knows all this stuff. This is all the most, I, you know, I, it's the funniest thing. He goes, everybody knows that there's light at the center of everyone. What's the big deal? I'm like, how do you know that? They come in, right? So we are this bridge generation and we deserve good education. Mm -hmm. We, you know, and that's really part of my commitment in my work is, I mean, I have a, I have a commitment to make the Akashic record available to anyone who wants it. Okay, that's really my commitment. And then the next part is to provide outstanding training to people who are seeking this because what's frightening to me is when I you know when people call me with these questions and I get the emails and 
I, and it's like, oh my God, what are people, what are they thinking? You know, this is not what this is at all. And so anyway, so that's where my work is. My first book came out, um, that book, the orange book, right? How to read the Akashic Records. Um, that came out in 2009. Now, when that book was first released, it was the only book that explained the, the character and composition of the Akashic record for personal use. I am not a scientist, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> anyway, um, but so it was the first um, resource, the first instructional manual, yeah, for how to read, the, how to access the record consciously, responsibly, deliberately, okay? And some of the foundation materials, energy healing in the records, clearing unwanted ancestral patterns and um, reconciling past lives, right? All of that is in there. But when that book came out, who doggy? I mean, I got, you know, I got like people sending me notes. How dare you? The Akashic record. You're not supposed to do that. And now, and there was nothing else. Like if you went to Amazon, there was nothing on the records. I mean, there was nothing. Okay. Now, you you go you am you Google Akashic record. Everybody and their mother, you know, Polly, you said it so well. People are saying, "Oh, this is the Akashic record." I'm like, ah, I don't know about that, boys and girls. I mean, I you know, you just you know, it's it's the whatever it is the the it's the fashion. Yeah, it's the trend right now. That doesn't mean people know what they're doing, and it doesn't. I, you know, it just means it's whatever it is. I don't know. I saw somebody was having an Akashic record party and I thought, what in the name of the gods is that? Do you know? <laughs> anyway, so. So that's kind of, you know, and then since then, right, since then, so the first book, right? How to read the records. The second book, Healing Through the Akashic Records, about personal healing, yeah. Um, my, the third book, right? Discover your soul's path about our relationship with the world. It, you know, as, as seen through the records, the possibilities, right? Like that. And then I just released my fourth book, which is inspired manifesting, right? Elevate your energy, ignite your dreams through the Akashic records. Um, right. Very so many questions. I have so very many Very exciting. Well, that's all right. Because you know, you know, Max, I've got all the answers. I hope you do. Oh, like, I, know. I, I hope that answers your question. You know, I, I but okay, so please, questions. please. And, and you know, you can interrupt me because I could just. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's good. This is good. I've got so many questions. Paula, do you have something? I um, do. I mean, I, actually, I, Dr. I, Dr. How you answered some of them. I think it's interesting that it's the focus on humans and not going beyond that. That was one question because many people do believe that there's, you know, more than just human existence. Um, but I think, I think something that, and Max and I talk about this a lot, is like, say you go get a reading, you have to pay, just like your regular psychic reading, pay a lot of attention to how you feel, like what's the energy with that. And I think, you know, again, what you're saying, the records are very spiritual. It's a spiritual experience, right? It's yes. not it's, it's an experience. And that's much like if you're getting a true psychic reading, it's an experience. It's not, you know, it's not finding out that your boyfriend's hanging around the corner somewhere, right? It's, right. it's that energetic experience, but is there any other way? Like if you want to get, get an Akashic reading, is there any other way to like, how do you know somebody is really good? I mean, because this sounds like you're opening up you know, you're opening up to this, you're trusting this person, right? With your, with your energy, with, with a lot, right? That's right. That's you know? right. That's right. How do you know? Okay. So th this is a great question. So the, um, you know, I always recommend when people are going for a reading, take your common sense with you. Don't leave your common sense at the door. I mean, that is like nutty nutto, okay? We are, it is in the culture, we're so used to being um, at the mercy of, of, of external spiritual authorities. 
whether it's a psychic reader, an Akashic record reader, a priest, a minister, a whatever, the guru, right? Somebody outside of us knows us better than we know ourselves. That is hogwash, okay? So the first thing we want to do, I mean, like, so when going for a reading, what's really important is, is my initial response or my initial um, experience of this reader, do I feel safe enough to be honest with them? If I am unwilling to be honest with this person and want to make them guess what's going on with me, then, then that's not a good reader for me. I have to feel safe. See, because human beings, when we have the experience of emotional safety, the, the light, you know, the light is always shining, but we block ourselves from it because we're, we don't feel safe. When we feel safe, the light will bring to the surface everything we need to know, everything that's valuable for us. So, so for me, the biggest question is, do I, is, do I feel safe enough to be honest with my reader? Okay. The other thing is this. We all know in the ordinary, we know when someone tells the truth, especially about us. Okay, we know it, it rings true within us. Sometimes it makes us laugh, it's so painful, right? It's like, oh my God, you have got to, you know, it goes ding, it goes right in. We also know when someone is deeply and profoundly full of it and they're all, they might be using a fancy vocabulary, but, but there's no connection. The thing about spiritual, these are spiritual readings and spiritual is based, a spiritual is another word for love. And the way we know our reader is good for us, right? Helpful for us is that we have the experience of being respected and appreciated, okay? The reader is kind and honorable. The reader doesn't make fun of us. Like if a reader says, I'm, and I've been, I've been in this experience, I've, I've had readers yell at me like, you've got to love yourself. I'm like, holy smokes, if I loved myself, first of all, I wouldn't be coming for the reading. Let's start there. And second of all, I don't know. I mean, you're being pretty mean to me. Yeah. yeah. How does that factor in? And, and I don't think that's like, I'm like, I don't think that's cute. Like that doesn't help me. Somebody yelling at me, that, that's never really helped. No. But this somebody is so saying- so much about what Polly and I say, a very similar kind of thing, right, Polly? Yeah, I mean, we very, we very much do address what we're talking about right now. Oh, interesting. How you feel interesting. with somebody, how you feel, your vibration, your frequency. It's, it's really everything. And I think that this is really, I always say that, you know, I, I don't know if you agree, Dr. Linda, but I, I feel like, what we do is really, it's, it's sacred and it, it needs to be taken, I, I mean, seriously to the point of, you know, you could say one thing to someone and it could change their life. And it's yes. really, it's really important for, I mean, not to give us so much power, but if you're really doing your job and you're really, you know, filtering right. all that through, you have to take this so seriously that it, you have to, be presenting something with kindness, with love, with with really a lot of compassion around someone. And being the person that's getting the reading, you know, a lot of times the person getting the reading, they're just like, I want to know, I want to know. But it's so important. I love that you said, you know, your common sense, bring your common sense in here. Because if it if you don't feel good, if something's not right, you know what? Just go, thanks for your time. I'm gonna find someone else that feels, you know, right. you feel in, right. in line. Sure. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's really um, because it is it is about the relationship right between the practitioner and the client. And when the relationship is honorable, the reading is good. Yes. And when yep. it's dishonorable, it's not, you know, um, early on, I, I one of the things I learned is that, you know, with this resource, with access to the record, 
and I could help a lot of people. I thought, well, that's nice. Then do you know what else I got? I could hurt just as many. Mm. The carelessness and thoughtlessness, right? I could, so, so it's always the question, do I want to be helpful? Do I, you know, and that's what, when working in the records, using the pathway prayer process, which came to me in 2001, this is very much about personal, like the, as the practitioner, I need to take responsibility for myself, right? I am, a, the practitioner is 100% responsible for the reading. Because see, if the practitioner gets the valid reasons the client is in a heck of a situation, then the client can get it. But I cannot, and see, we can only transmit who we are. We can't transmit, there's nothing else to transmit, right? And so if I don't get it, you aren't gonna get it. It's the law, right? The law, the universe, right? There's no, yeah, because we're all connected. Yeah, right? No, yeah, all connected. Yeah. right. So yeah. if I get it, you can get it, right? And, but if I don't get it, no man, there's no amount of cajoling, insisting, manipulating that I can do to force you to force the will of the universe down your throat. Just, it just doesn't work that way. But if I get it, you'll get it. And, but that's something to learn. I mean, I don't know about you, you two, but I know when I first came into this, I mean, I didn't even understand what I was doing. Right, I didn't understand like the motivations behind it and the, the intentions and the goals and all of that. Um, and, and that has been, of course, a growth process, which, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm really grateful to, to be involved in it, so. I love it, I love it. Um, can I just turn that kind of corner yeah. just a second? I have a Whatever. question. Whatever, you got, yes, um, yes. So, Dr. Linda, you know, talking about the Akashic Record and all that stuff, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I get the, I, the idea and what it is, right? Um, but my question is, um, what is the difference between the Akashic Records and what would be called the Divine Matrix or the Mind of God? What is the difference for you? <laughs> the Mind of God, the Divine Matrix. Okay, all yeah, I got it. I got it. I know what you're talking okay. about. Okay, okay. So, okay, the Akashic record. So there are a few ways we're gonna, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to pin down, of course, but we can describe it, okay? So one of the ways we describe it is the intersecting zone of the heavens and the earth through an individual, okay? That's an individual's records. It is that zone, yeah? Um, in the interior of every being where the heavens and the earth connect as they do. So that's one way we want to consider that. Then we want to look again. There's like the universal mind, the divine mind. Is it wonderful? Oh my God, yes. But here's the thing. The Akashic record is the convergence of the universal mind, the universal heart, and the universal will. It's dimensionally spherical okay it is composed of those those three are your dominant elements of the record right so it's not just the mind okay which on its own the universal mind is like un unbelievable it's fabulous the universal will also tremendous the universal heart need I say anything when we put these three together, like in an overlay, and we carve out the place where the three converge, that is the record, okay? Now, it is also, it is a realm of light, okay? So it's not a deity. We don't have to pray to it. Thank goodness, you know, we, we can't, you know, we don't beg it. We don't implore it. You know, I teach people around the world and, and it's interesting in some cultures, they'll say, well, I was praying to my record. I'm like, why? This is a body of light. That makes no sense, right? So anyway, but that's, a, but do you see? So, so we're sorting out at this point in history, we're teasing out the old ideas of a spiritual resource and we're moving into very Aquarian understandings. 
Okay, so universal heart, mind, mind. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Here's this other thing. The Akashic record resides at the soul level. It is a soul level dimension of consciousness. It is woven into the fabric of the soul. Now, if we understand or consider that the soul, like if you think that the soul is at the floor of the heart center, Okay, so just imagine that the floor of the heart center is like, I like to think of it like mylar, like those, yep, those the great balloons, right? There's a surface like that. It's a reflective, yeah, reflective. The Akashic record is, it's, so it's woven into the soul. It emerges, it radiates from the soul, connecting us to the source. So it is the energetic connective tissue from the soul to the source that keeps us in place as our awareness keeps awakening. We have, you know, we're, we're always in the process of expanding spiritual awareness and awakening, always. It's very accelerated right now, but see the record is the energetic connective tissue that keeps us together while we're waking up and probably certainly beyond that. Okay, so there are, so the more we can get a sense of it, right, it is a field of light. That's really what it is. And light is synonymous. Like, it's interesting what happens with light, like spiritual light in a human being is immediately converted to attributes of love. So people, you know, when, when you come for a reading or, you know, when people are learning how to do readings, one of the exercises we do is, is looking for the light. People are like, I don't, where's the light? You know, we're looking for a beam of light, a physical light. That's not how this is. It's because what happens when light, inner, when, when spiritual light interfaces with the human dimension, it is immediately converted to attributes of love, which is that universal? Yes, that's universal. However, the way that love is, experienced and expressed at the level of individual is different with everyone. It's unique. So like, you know, some people are very um, enthusiastic and appreciative and generous and right, hospitable. And other people are tranquil and serene and retiring and invitational. I mean, so it, it's so interesting. And yet these are all attributes of love. It's stunning to me. This is absolutely stunning stuff. So beautiful. I'm I sorry. Go on. <laughs> oh, no, don't be sorry. I think it's really great. It reminds me of I'm a, you know, I'm a student and a teacher of A Course in Miracles for 38 years. I've been doing this work for many, oh, cool. many, many years. Cool. Okay. And so it reminds me of in the in the course he says um, that we all come here with a highly individualized curriculum. So it kind of is it's making me think about, you know, all of those, th those convergences in our individual souls, right? Connected yes. to all that is. That's right. It's, it's two pieces, right? Because see, and every set of records, like your records, my records, Polly, your records, all of our records, there are two parts to each set of records. The first is permanent right? It's fixed. It's permanent. So when people say the record's in stone, this is what they're talking about. At the inception of the soul, a divine impression is made in the fabric of the soul. And it is your ultimate destiny or your destination. It's who you are destined to become. It is good. We want it to be permanent. We don't want to change it. <laughs> it's good. Let's keep it. Mwah! Okay. That's one dimension of the record. What travels along with that is the catalog of the lifetimes you live through which you awaken to the truth of who you are. You awaken, you experience, you express for yourself, for others, and all of creation. The, from an Akashic standpoint, the purpose of reincarnation is to grow into unconditional love for the self, others, and all of creation. The unconditional love is already there, <laughs> whether we like it or not, right? It's true though, it's, it's there. The question is how, and as, you know, when we're not in human form, this stuff's easy. <laughs> you know, we're, it's a love fest, right? But you put us in a body, 
throw in a teenager, a mortgage, a car payment, hot dog. It's like, woohoo, game on. The question is, how do I love myself now? That is the question. You know, when I was doing the, after my first book, I thought, oh, I've got the method. I'm done. <laughs> anyway, lo and behold, Never I was done. just beginning, right? Never done. Never done. So the second, so then I realized as a person, I thought, my God, you know, I had, <clears throat> my father was dying and my son is like this creative, you know, giant and five years old, <laughs> driving me crazy. You know, I'm like, how do I, how do I do this? Because I had all these spiritual ideals, great ideals, right? I'm going to be, I'll be a presence for peace and love. You know, I have five sisters and two brothers and I'm like, oh, and now, and I would go home, oh, I'd be crying and I had plans for myself and plans for everybody. But the thing was, what kept happening was, I kept falling short of my own ideals. And then I would berate myself. And then, I mean, it was just, you know, and then I would, it would just snowball into um, complete self-absorption and paralysis and uselessness, which really did no one any good. So I would go into my records. And do you know it was the craziest thing? Because I'd go in, I'd be like, oh, I did it again. I yelled at this when I did that. You know, I didn't do this. I mean, I'm like recounting all the errors of my ways, you know. And the, the record, I have to tell, no matter what I would bring in, I would get, you know, it's okay, Lynn. We know it's not perfect. You want to do better. And right now this is hard and blah, blah. And I thought something is terribly wrong because this is a spiritual resource and they are, it's nothing but kind and warm and accepting something. You know, I'm from the school where you pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you keep your, you know, whatever. Suffering, rough work. Suffer, suffer. suffer, right? Work harder, harder. And I mean, it just was, anyway. So about six months into this, it occurs to me that maybe, maybe there's an idea here. And it was at this point, my whole relationship with my own record shifted. And I began to understand that there is a spiritual practice of unconditional self-love. And I was being trained in it. Mm, nice. And it has changed, and it is the foundation then of all my work, right? Because every everything I do, you know, everything I do, then I then I write a book about it, right? I know some people are like, oh, I sit down, I channel a book. I, I don't I don't channel a book. I get a little piece. I work with it. I ni ni ni. I work with my students. Then when it's when I'm pretty sure, then I write it down. <laughs> Anyway, it's just, it's, you know, everybody's process is different, but that's how it goes. So, so what else? Um, okay, I have a question for you. I mean, so, and Max and I talk about this a lot, the, the deeper, you know, looking for the deeper answers or looking for the deeper meaning in life. So if somebody wants to get an Akashic record, is it like, what can they expect? Are they going to find out their life purpose? Are they going to find out why people are in their life? I mean, are they going to really get these life-changing answers? Is that why people go? Depends on their questions. So you Here's can the... go in and fire away any question like- Okay, no, 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 no. This is really good. This is, I'm so glad you're bringing this up. Here's the thing. The record responds. So, okay, the record is the past, present, and future of all possibilities. It's not absolutely, okay? Yeah. So let's get that, let's get that out there, okay? Now, it is not your best predictive tool because it's about who we are becoming, not what we're wearing as it's happening. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I just lost your question. Can you well, I just, I guess I want to know, and I, I mean, Max, I can feel Max's brain going off. The oh, 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 oh. So here's the thing. Just because everything is available, doesn't mean we it's useful, right? Right. So yeah. I go into the record because right now I'm having an issue with my partner, my son, my sister, my work, I'm stuck, I'm this, I'm that. The questions, it's very much, um, the record will respond to my authentic concerns. 
Okay. Now I happen to have, because I'm kind of a curious kind of person, I happen to have a list of all the questions I want answers to about life and the universe and na na na. And I will go, but see, the truth is there's no juice behind that because I don't really need to know that stuff today unless I do. <laughs> okay. So what happens is if I go in and I have questions about myself, yeah, my journey, my quest, all of that, the people involved, but, but here's what's, then the record responds. Okay. So, so there are things that just have no influence over on me at this point in life. Are they interesting? Yes. Life is interesting. People are interesting. Do I need to know everything? No. <laughs> so it's what is going to help me take my next step. Where can we shine the light on now? The other thing I have found, much to my chagrin, is that if I go in and ask about um, a relationship problem, could be anything, any relationship, you know, they all involve people. Okay. And in my relationships, I am one of those people. And so I'll go in and I'll say, what's the problem in this relationship? And what happens is I always get directed back to myself. What is my part? What am I doing? What are my, what are my expectations? What are my assumptions? What's the difference between my expectation and the reality? Why can't I accept this other individual for who they are? What is it in me that is so insistent that they be other than who they are? This is the kind of stuff. The other, right, do you see this? The mm -hmm. other thing that's so interesting in the record is when I'm in the record, the assumption, it's an Akashic assumption, yeah, is that every choice I've ever made, this life, past lives, I mean, whatever, every choice I've ever made has been positive at the point of selection. No one ever says, well, listen, I have these three different people I could marry. I like the one. I really can't stand that third one. That's the one I'm going to marry. No one ever says that. No one ever says, oh, good. And now I am going to get involved with a drug addict and ruin my life. No one ever in history has said that. Okay. So the, que the thing is, we want to go back to the point of origin. At that point in time, why was this such a good idea? To, see, the more I can understand my own motivations, my own decisions, right? The positive value, because the law has it, that as long as I'm judging something negatively, I can't let it go. It's like glue. I'm stuck. Person, place, or thing. I'm wearing it right? But the minute I can appreciate the positive value, the positive contribution a person or an event has made to me, okay? And I'm not talking about like, oh, it's bad medicine and it helps. No, I'm saying even if, even if things have gone totally haywire and are awful, what's the value for me? Okay. Sometimes, it's that we learn to listen to ourselves. Sometimes, you know, I've talked to so many people, they're like, you know, I knew when I was walking down the aisle, this wasn't going to go well. And I was like, and, and did you know before then? Well, yes. And why did you marry this person? Well, because we already rented the hall. So, all right. So why didn't you listen to yourself? See, and the records don't say you are a jerk. The records say there must have been a good reason that you went ahead with it or you wouldn't have done it. People love themselves, okay? Everyone is always doing what they consider to be the next right action to expand their personal experience of love and safety. Of course. It well, reminds me so much of what you, when you say that is that, you know, when, when I've been doing reasons for many, many, many years and, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, it just comes to me what the person needs to hear. And it, you many times, is not, it is not one of their questions at all. They want to know about their finances. But I'm like, you need to understand. And I don't know why. I mean, I'm sure that I'm tapping into all that is, right? And I'm just like, you, your mother, 
you and your mother have have something and there's something going on here. I don't know why, but then on their question, they're like, I want to know about my job. And I'm like, hold on about your job for a second, because this is what's going to open your heart. And this is what's going to make you feel more connected to all that is. And, and it's something to do with your mo mother. Does that kind of make sense, doctor? This makes all, because here's the thing. We are unified beings. Yeah. So everything we do and don't do affects everything we do and don't do. <laughs> okay, so someone, wait, I have a great, this is a great story. You want to hear a great story? So this woman comes in and here's the problem. The problem is she's met this, she's married to this guy. When, they've been married for like three or four years, not that long. And he, when they first met, I mean, it was just love shack. I mean, they were crazy about each other. She was an artist, right? She had a little studio, whatever. She's doing her she's painting. She's doing her thing. Very happy. Everybody's happy. Okay. A couple of years into this, the relationship is soured. It has really soured. And she now is very interested in the gardener. Okay, this is like, I'm like, I'm like our, you know, I got it. I, we all get it, right? We all get it. We all want to, right? But the fact of the matter is, you know, you were, anyway, whatever. So here's what goes down. We're in the reading and she's like, how do I, this, the gardener's my soulmate. My husband's not my soulmate. I mean, it's all this, all this stuff. And we're in the reading and what occurs is I'm getting all this guidance about, ask her about what she's doing with her art. And I'm like, you know, of course I'm always, you know, argumentative. I'm like, that's not what she's asking about. I need help with this. Ask her this. So I ask, I say, what are you doing with your art? Well, when we were first married, I was doing my art all the time, but you know, I stopped doing it and whatever, right? So she hasn't done any art for like a year and a half. And the guidance from the records, this is so fabulous, was you want to clear up your relationships, get it on your calendar, even if all you do in the beginning is go sit in your studio and talk to yourself. Doesn't matter. You need to get back in there. So she told me she thought I was completely insane. I was like, yeah, I got it, you know, because she really wanted you know, she wanted to tie up these relationships when in fact, so it turns out, lo and behold, after a while, about a year and a half later, I hear from her again. She's going back into the studio. It was driving her crazy to just sit there. She started tinkering around. She's now painting again. As her creative needs were met, her need for the gardener, Mr. Entertainment, was just it went away. It just, she didn't know what happened. All of a sudden he looked, he was not that exciting anymore. And she was back in love with her husband. Cause see, in order for that relationship to work, she needed to be in the fullness of who she was. It's just that it was inconvenient. Okay. And we understand that we all, we're all over 20. We understand that sometimes being who we are is a little inconvenient, <laughs> but you know what? If we're not who we are, we have nothing to build our lives on. We have nothing to go on. So anyway, so okay. that's how the records work because the understanding is this is a whole woman. Now to me as the reader at the time, I, I didn't get it right. I got it. I didn't get it, you know, because because part of being a reader is, you know, I want to, I want to help this woman. I want to give her what she wants. I want to make her happy. But the thing is, it's, you know, is it long-term? Is it short-term? Right. And wow. that's what to understand when we do this, you know, people who want to be readers have a deep commitment to empowering others and, and are really sensitive. And, um, and we take that into consideration, right? That the people who do this work really, their intentions are always good. But you know, we're all human beings and we're all gonna make mistakes. And so how do we accommodate for that, right? And see the record is, I, you know, it's one thing what the reader says, it's another what the client hears, right? Those are two different trajectories. I mean, it's been my experience. People will say, you know, I used to live in this small town, small town of 7,000 people. We're talking small. Anyway, and I would go into the grocery and I would see people that I had read and they would come up to me and say things like, oh, you said blah, blah. I had no recollection of what I said. And I was like, 
And then it occurred to me, did I really say that? Or was that's when I learned about people hear what they need to hear. Anyway, it's, it was fascinating. So. Well, I, Linda, this has been amazing. And I think it's really, I think both for Max and I, I think it's really interesting because I think both of us, you know, can say that we probably feel like we dip our toes into that when we do readings because. Absolutely. Um, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you do. Yeah, so it's so interesting. I mean, I've actually, you know, I'm so honored with this because I've been so interested in really what the records are because there's so many people that say they read them and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And so, right, because it's really having faith in, like you said, that there, you, if you say you're doing that, there's a lot of, it's a spiritual experience. There's a lot of, you have to be very honorable, very respectful, very it's a it's a you know what's the word i'm looking for it's not like going to buying a pair of shoes it's sacred right? it's it sacred. Is sacred it really is sacred it really is sacred mm -hmm. and um and and we all know the sacred when we enter into that space we Absolutely. all know it it's it's part of who we are anyway yeah. and so it's you know and i think it's interesting there's a familiarity to it and an intimacy and yet a wonder, which always blows my mind. I'm like, how is it that it can be so known, right? So like comfortable and yet so unknown. So it, it really is, I think in essence, when we step into the record, we are right in the heart of spiritual paradox. And, and the first spiritual paradox that we encounter is that you know, at the level of the soul, it is absolutely true that we are infinite, eternal, immortal, unlimited. We, all of that is true. And at the level of human, we are finite, we are flawed, we are mortal, we are imperfect. And, and so no wonder we're all upside down because all of these things are true simultaneously. We should be confused. It's confusing. I always, I always saw, say the, the, the greatest spiritual truth always comes with the paradox. Always. To go, to go high, you have to go deep. That's right. To go to eternal, you have to be in the, in the fight. I mean, That's right. It always is that. And, and writing that is really what it's all about. With spiritual paths, writing that way there right. is what it's really all about. And, and how hopefully, you know, we can start to, you know, try to get on the surfboard and master that, you know, in our own lives so that we can go, hey, you can try it yourself and we can kind of guide people mm -hmm. in that way. And then I want to, we're going to probably have to wrap up, but okay. just, um, you know, this has been such a pleasure. I'm just like, you, you see, I've been writing notes and you're just, you're just <laughs> such a bright light. So, so it's, would you say that it's um, quite possible that people are, are tapping into their rec, to the record and they don't even actually know that that's what they're doing. Okay, okay. This is a this is. I don't a, mean to open up a whole can of worms. No, no, but. no, 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 no. And I will do my best to kind of keep my, stay in my whatever. Okay. Yes. The short answer is yes. Here's here's the issue, as I understand it. Because of who we are in human, the evolution of human consciousness. We have entered this age of spiritual authority and individual responsibility. Okay. Now, historically, and even currently, many people bump into the record at random, right? It's a random like, oh, huh, and then I had this moment and I've never been there since, or I'm trying to get there, or I'm pretending I'm there, or, I mean, there are a lot of ways to do this, right? Right. Okay. With the work that I do, we are talking about being intentional and deliberate. The work is conscious, responsible, and deliberate. So nobody's out cold in a channel, trance channeling. There's none of that going on. It's conscious, responsible, and deliberate. So, and because they're my records, or with your permission, they're your records, but only with your permission, right? But it's my records. I am entitled, mm -hmm. right? It is my 
birthright. It is my spiritual whatever, right? I am entitled to have more conscious connection with my own soul. Everyone already has a connection with their own soul. And some people are more conscious than others. It's already the case. But what we're looking at is how do I have a more conscious connection, right? That's what this is. In the saying of the prayer, there is a subtle shift in awareness, mm. right? That gives us access, insight, guidance, and wisdom to the record. When we are in the record, do you know, it's like somebody hands you a million dollars. And now the question is, what are you going to do with it? Well, you can stand there and just hang out with it. I mean, I understand that. That's cool. Go ahead. But if I want this to be useful, productive, meaningful, significant for myself and others, I need to learn how this field works. What's happening here? What's not happening? What are... You know, I do a whole part in, in the practitioner certification on what are appropriate expectations of the work, right? Because there are so many confusing old ideas that people have had, right? And, you know, I've had people weeping in classes for decades now because they haven't seen the book or they haven't met somebody in a big, you know, some tall skinny guy in a brown robe. You aren't gonna see anybody. There's nobody to see. I mean, one of the great things, it's so Aquarian in the records, is that the, the beings of light who, who like govern things, right? They, they manage the flow of the energy and the wisdom and all of that. In order for a being of light to be part of the Akashic team, so to speak, they must relinquish their individual identity, their ego and ego needs. So we never know their names. They don't engage with us directly. It's a group that is collectively directing light energy to us, right? That is very different than having my old spirit guide. Oh, and I love my spirit guides, but they're not in the records because they have individual personalities, identities, jobs, implements, and stuff. So it's a different, it's a different ball game. And we need to know the rules of the road. We don't know. We don't know. And if you think about it, it's only like in the last century, the, uh, the big Akashic record person was Edgar Cayce. But he was still in that old elitist paradigm where there was one person and he was in a trance. He was out cold. He didn't know what he was saying. He had no authority. And, you know, was he great? Yes, his work was brilliant. He made the Akashic record available in the Western world. But I'll tell you something. He was one person. He could not teach anyone else how to do it. And now it's that's not, those days are over. I mean, did we have fun? Yes, we had fun. But now it's a different time. And it is time. Anybody who wants to work in the record can. Because I love the truth is, not everybody wants to work in the record. <laughs> but I love the self-empowerment, right? I love that. I love yeah. that it's yes, uh, yes, yes. absolutely. Okay, good. So, um, Max, any last question? I mean, Dr. How you've been phenomenal. And I think and I'm so glad that you came because it really um, it almost rounds out a lot of the stuff that Max and I talk about, right? I mean, it really does. It, it brings a nice, it, um, mm -hmm. it smooths the ed edges, so to speak. Oh, good, good, yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. Um, and I love the self-empowerment aspect. I think that that's so valuable. So if people want to learn more about you, do you have a website? Oh, or of course, of course. My website, <laughs> lindahow.com. Linda uh dot com um and i have a school the linda house center for akashic studies and you know we, we teach people and um i have certified teachers elite cert, you know certified teachers who who i've trained and i work with people i mean there's all like lots and lots of resources i also have my latest book is inspired manifesting elevate your energy and ignite your dreams through the akashic record and it's very interesting because, Max, there is a whole section there on paradox and actually standing on the infinity symbol as if it's a skateboard. I love it. 
<laughs> so it's anyway, but it's really, it's wonderful to be with you guys. You ask great yeah. questions. Um, you know, it's always a real treat for me to talk to people who can hear me and, um, and, and who, you know, we, we share a resonance and, and I have a great appreciation for that. And on top of that, you guys are really cool. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. We will share this uh, recording widely. And I also, um, somebody that works, I mean, you have a whole team. I'm sure you have a whole team of the unseen and the seen, but um, we have a meditation. One of your meditations is going to be available um, oh, cool. with the recording so we, they can download one of your meditations. And I, you know, everybody listening, I strongly encourage you, you know, Dr. Howe isn't just well known in, in the U.S. She's internationally a teacher and known. So she, um, you know, we're very honored to have her take you know, share her time and her wisdom with us today. Absolutely. So reach out to her. And if you have questions about um, how to reach out to her, you can contact Max or I, but we just such an honor. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, you guys. It's thank wonderful. you, doctor. Many blessings to you. Oh, yeah, you too. thank you. Okay. See you later. Bye -bye. Thank you.